This is all about the temperature. It's all about taking that little element on the corner there, getting just the right temperature, and then forget about it, okay? Let it cook itself. So we've got a snapper. I've got a really nice stable board, first and foremost. I've put a little cloth underneath it, but it is quite important to dry the fish off, make sure there's no little bits and pieces. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is go up through the head, get rid of any excess scales, hand nice and firm on it, and then we start at the top of the head and basically work our way down. So once I've got my knife in there, you're gonna see I'm just gonna go and pretty much keep going all the way in one stroke, all the way down that end. There's no sort of getting in there. Get my knife in there and then I'm just gonna go all the way down. And you're gonna go all the way to the backbone, all right? Once you go to the backbone, push the knife through. You can hear it and then pull the knife straight up to the top, okay? And what I've done is I've released that whole top side of the fish. You can see through there, okay? Taking everything pretty much off. Now I've only got this bottom side, which is still attached. I've gone over the backbone already, okay? And I'm gonna to go to come down the other side. I'm gonna do it in a couple of neat strokes like that. Not hacking again, just, just nice neat slices. So we'll take one fillet off there. So you can see that we've taken it nice and clean all the way around, and it's nice and neat, ready to go. So let's turn over and do the other side. We start down the bottom of the tail end at this, this time and the same process. I'm pushing it quite firmly and I'm just gonna follow the knife right up to the top. Okay, again, back in there, follow the knife right up to the top. Some people, what they would do at this stage is take the head off, because if you take the head off, obviously this whole fillet lies flat again. Then you've got, you know, you haven't got this sort of bump to get up if you like. Okay. So again, I've just gone straight through the bones, down to the bottom, Another stroke down to the bottom and off, okay? Okay, so we've got our fillets off nicely, but then we want to work out our portions. So first things first, I want to go through here and I want to dislodge these bones through here because I want to get that part up and then basically underneath them and take that piece out there, okay? Pin boning, okay? Nice little tub, water, tweezers, Use the tweezers from upstairs in the bathroom, use your special specialist tweezers. These are quite small little tweezers. And basically what we're gonna do is go through and pick out all these little bones, okay? A good pair of tweezers is invaluable because a good pair of tweezers will just be bang, 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 bang. Now, what we want off this was we want a really nice portion to serve. I'm gonna take, that could be put pretty much a nice portion of fish there. You take another portion through here, then I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to score the skin, okay? And this will allow me to get it really nice and crispy. So I'm sc scoring it about five millimetres apart. Nice and long, not too deep into the fish, reasonably deep in there though. And that's really going to allow the oil to get inside and it's going to allow my fish to crispen up. And you can see that's what I envisioned seeing <laughs> when this challenge starts. I just want someone to come up with that and put that in front of us and cook it like that because it's it, that is amazing it's it's delicious so let's quickly do this other fillet as well the less you move these pieces of fish the better it's going to turn out let's say you haven't got the pin boners I would start on this end up here and I'd go all the way through and I'd just go on the top side of the bones you can see when the fishmongers do that and then they would go the other side here wouldn't they they would take this side off as well and cut down to about there and then you would have a fillet with the bones taken off. So let's take this whole piece of fish in half. You've got this one half, which is the belly side. And then we've got this other half, which is the top side. I'll just do a nice small one for this, actually. Take it down to about there. You've got a really nice portion sized piece of fish off that top side of the fish. And again, we're going to go through and score it. You can see how clean the edges are. You can see that it is, you know, it is spot on beautiful. Now the next step is let's cook our mussels. Just go through, these have all been cleaned up, they're ready to go, go through, double check them. The bed's been pretty much pulled out where it can, and if it's not pulled out now, I'm gonna get it at a later time. Got a little one there, little rinse in the water, pan's working. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in here because I actually want that olive oil to carry through for the rest of the dish. Get it reasonably warm, not, not boiling hot. I flicked a little bit of water in there, water off the mussels, just so I can determine what temperature it is. Again, nice common sense stuff. You can hear that it's starting to spit a little bit, so they're ready to go in. Put the lid on, nice and hot. We'll let that cook away for 30 seconds to a minute before I add the wine. 
So we're gonna use Brancot Estate, which is lovely. Nice little bit of wine in there, not too much, just a dash. Let's cut up our bacon. We've got really nice pancetta here, smoked pancetta. I'm gonna take a nice piece off the side of this. I'll take the fat off the top end of it. I'm not gonna use the rind, just even it up. Sometimes these are quite firm. This is actually quite a soft piece. Sometimes a piece of pancetta like this can be rock hard. This is actually quite bendy, so you just need to work with that. It's easier to cut when it's quite firm. So keep it in the fridge right up to the last second and it will be easier to handle. They are pretty much ready. Straight into a colander and we're going to just let them sit for a while and get cool enough for me to process them. So let's cut some of the uh, pancetta off. Okay, bundle them up into a nice little bunch, cut them into their nice little lardons. The next step is probably to deal with the leek. The leek is probably one of my favourite ingredients in the kitchen, I th they're glorious. You know, great, great, great ingredient, you can do so much with them, very, very versatile. We'll strip off that top end of the leek straight away. The part of the leek that I want to use today is really the stem part down here, okay? We want to cut this leek a nice reasonable size as well, so a sort of reasonable size and thickness. I think about that sort of thick. You can see that I sort of just cut, flick, cut, flick, is what you want to do. And then we'll just go through and literally push them out of their shells, okay? It just means that I don't have to push them and work them to break them up during the actual cooking of the dish. Edamame. I've got ready to go. I've shelled my edamame and we've got the little edamame beans out of the inside of the pod. They've all been popped and ready to go. Some lovely fresh frozen peas. You know, frozen peas are glorious. A few nice fresh slices of garlic. We've got some nice little peeled shallots, which is the next step. So we'll just go off the top, keep them in their nice shape. And again, nice rounds. And you want to, you know, you want those to be reasonably visible through the dish as well, because that just follows on from everything else. There's all, all, a, all sort of a logic pattern to it. Shallots also always have a big piece and a small piece within there. Often like this, you're going to, you're going to once you get a certain amount of shell off it, they generally spit in two. Those cook like that, you know. Pick them down, get four or five little pieces like that cooked in a little bit of water, a tiny bit of butter, sugar salt and maybe throw a few sprigs of thyme in there are glorious. They look fantastic. You've got these scattered around on your dish. Then Excuse me, not. chef. <laughs> How are you going? Yeah, I'm going fine. What are you making? Is it any good? Yeah. We're, we're doing all the preparation first and then we're going to go on to a little bit of the cooking. How are you going? Which is, well, funnily enough, I'm doing the same thing because that's how you do it, isn't it? Yeah, it sort you know? of is. And it look at this is. guy's bench, will you? And I don't know if you can see mine. Mine's slightly messier, but there's not crap everywhere and... No, you but you do, you do get messy. You do, when you cook yeah. at pace, you do get messy, but that's what's important. Uh, wet cloth, cloth, washing area set up, all the little bits and pieces that you can just roll through it and, and get yourself organised, you know what I mean? It's, it's really important. And if in doubt, clean up. Exactly. When you haven't got anything to do, and when you think, right, what am I going to do next, and, I, and I'm having a bit of a brain block, think. Uh, <laughs> you know? Click clean and think. Ten minutes, I'll meet you at the pass. Done. See you soon. Right. So we've got our mussels, I'm going to just go through, I don't like actually taking too much off these mussels, I check for beards, I check for crabs. So once we've got our mussel juice here, I'm going to reduce our mussel juice down a little bit. Because I've let it sit for a few minutes as well, that I let it sit quietly on the side over there once I'd cooked them, five to ten minutes. Once I come back to do this, just strain it off gently. So straining it straight into a pan, that's it. You're probably not going to be able to see it, but there is a little bit of sand in the bottom of there. And I'm just going to get rid of that and leave it. Because if I go anymore, it's just like a sediment. It just sinks to the bottom, and that's your perfect spot to get rid of it. Okay, so mussel juice back on. And then we've got a nice pan on to cook all our leeks and everything else. And I've also got a nice big pan on to cook my fish. Now this is where it all comes down to the timing. Because I've now got three things on the go. I've got my juice, which I'm going to reduce and finish with cream. I've got this pan where I'm going to sweat down my bacon and everything else. Put my mussels through it, and I've got my piece of fish that I'm going to cook on the side as well. And I'm going to just pick thyme leaves and put them through this uh, mussel sauce for when I'm reducing it down. So I am going to start with a little bit of olive oil, and then I'm going to move to butter after that. What do you want to do with the pancetta? What do you think? Give me some tips. Crispy pancetta. Crispy's good. Crispy, 
Smells good, tastes good, flavour, a little bit of a crunch through there as well. Can't argue with any of that, can you? There is no substitute for roasting and flavour. It's almost like getting that sort of bacon flavour into the oil. So you've got this oil that's really beautifully flavoured with bacon as well. And you can see that the bacon has already beautiful, I mean it's so nice, it's crispened up really, really well. It's nice even cut little pieces. Next thing I want to do is turn the temperature down on that, okay, because I'm going to start to add the rest of my ingredients. Okay, next thing is in is my uh, onion and my garlic. When you put it in, it is already reasonably hot in that pan, okay, so just keep it moving, okay. Piece of fish, pan's reasonably hot. Okay, it's going to go straight in the pan. Now, I'm just holding my hand on it gently to just keep it in place. It's quite a big piece of fish, and the first thing it does is like anything that you're cooking like that, is curl up. It's going to curl up, at, you know, like anything. You put your finger in the pan and burn it. What does it do? It just tightens. Anything you burn shrivels, shrinks, tightens. Leeks, ready to go in the pan as well now. Once I've got my leeks in there, I'm going to add a little bit of butter. And I'm going to keep the cooking temperature nice and slow now. I've got my crispiness, I've got my shallots in there, I've got my leeks in there, and I'm just going to sweat them down, okay? Right, let's go over and have a look at this piece of fish. So you can see that it's, it's flattened out, it curled right up, I held it just a little bit, just a little bit of pressure on it. It's now sort of completely relaxed, and it will flatten out and cook nice and crispy and evenly like that. This is all about the temperature. It's all about taking that little element on the corner there, getting just the right temperature, and then forget about it, okay? Let it cook itself. A Little bit of salt. That's the first time I've seasoned it. My leeks are sweating down nicely. Again, I'm not putting any extra salt in that. Leeks are about half cooked. So we'll slowly add some peas, okay? We'll add a little bit of the edamame as well. Keep stirring that. Right, mussels. So let's go back to our mussels. They're quite big. I might just take them in half. You can take these tongues out. Some people do, some people don't. I think Golty does. Um, I don't use I quite like them. I don't find them that offensive or anything like that. I think I'm pretty much there with the fish. So just pull it off the heat. I'm going to let it sit on the side there. A bit more basting. At this point, I'm going to turn it over and just finish it off on the underside, okay? I've got my stock down, which I'm now going to pour through my leeks and my peas. I've got my mussels, which I'm going to put through there as well. I've got some nice little parsley leaves that's going to go through there also. Just take my fish out onto a paper towel, draining the oil off it so there's no excess oil on there. And what this sauce is, I'll just taste it, double check it before I finish it. That is pretty much maximum of seasoning, and I haven't gone anywhere near salt with it, okay? It is very well seasoned. Get the right amount of garnish. I've got more left in the pan. I think that's pretty much the right amount for this dish. A little bit of fish on top, a tiny little bit of rock salt just on the top, and there you have it. Nice little dish, crispy skin snapper, mussels, bacon, leeks, edamame, peas, all fresh, all very summery and that sort of thing. Nice and natural, done.